What's going on, y'all? Um, how y'all doing, first of all? I don't know how this video gonna go because, to be quite honest, I really don't have... Mm, my lips are extra greasy. I really don't have nothing to really talk about. I mean, this is the last video for what it is at the end of this year for 2016. I guess it's gonna be like a reflection video, uh, sprinkle a little stuff here and there. But it's really not been that much going on that I care to talk about. Let me just put that out there. Because some of y'all like that other little shit, but, you know, I don't. I don't. I'm going to be honest. Um, To be quite honest, this last, these last few days have been such bullshit. And 2016 has been playing games with us for real, for real. But first of all, let me just start this video off by saying... Happy birthday to all the Capricorns that are coming up and who have passed, okay? Happy belated birthday. I already told you, girl, to my girl, Rox. Okay, if y'all didn't get y'all birthday in, you know, happy birthday's in to her. Y'all can still go over there and tell her happy birthday or whatever. She accept them, you know. Um, Rox looks good for her age. I am not gonna lie, bitch. Uh, when I found out how old she was, I was like, bitch, for real, stop fucking playing. But okay, happy birthday to you, girl. Happy birthday to Tanisha Denise. Your birthday is coming up tomorrow, I believe, which is Friday. So, come on, Capricorn. Happy birthday to you, boo. Um, if, I, if I don't get to see you or say it on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, happy birthday to you. And these are all my fellow YouTubers. And, you know, like I said, I got to show love and support because these people always support me to the fullest. And especially my birthday, uh, uh, when is the Ghetto View? The Ghetto View and James Cowell have the same birthday. I think it's January 9th, two days after mine. So, happy birthday, early birthday to the both of y'all. I want to put it in this video. When is the 9th? The 9th is going to be on a Tuesday. No, it's going to be a Monday because my birthday is on a Saturday. Bitch, my birthday is on a Saturday. Okay, my birthday is January 7th, which is next Saturday. Yeah, it's next Saturday. And, you know, my thing is this. I'm really not a big birthday person. Like, I don't, if y'all don't know me, I grew up background, uh, so uh, not necessarily celebrating holidays because the background that I grew up, I grew up as Jehovah Witness. We don't celebrate stuff like that, but I'm not baptized and I'm not active. I haven't been to a hall in over 10, bitch, I'm, I'm old as fuck. Um, yes, over 10 years, o over 10 years. As soon as I turned 18, I was like, I'm out because I knew it just at that moment in time. I'm just mentally not ready for all of that, you know, and given my life and, you know, some of the things that they don't uh, practice or whatever that I am, you know, so it is what it is. But, you know, my birthday is January 7th. It's on a Saturday. I had plans for this. Whole Listen, I've been off since last Friday, okay, which is kind of messed up because I go back to work tomorrow to be off for another three days. Y'all could have just gave me yes uh, tomorrow off, like for real, and just let it go in concession. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just pissed. I'm just pissed. And then I'm not even working a full day tomorrow. I'm working a half a day from nine to fucking one o'clock. I gotta wake up early just to go to work <laughs> for four hours. But uh, anyway, I gotta get that money. Um, it's cool though. So I did have some plans that was gonna happen for this whole break, and Friday came along. And I don't know if it's this Mercury retrograde that's going on, bitch, but whatever the fuck it is, it's been some shit that's been going on from Friday until now, and it's fucking my whole shit up. And I mean, when I tell you whatever little plants that I had planned, all of them got trashed in the corner, in the garbage, and burned set of flame, okay? And so when Christmas came around, um... I didn't want to really be a Grinch, but I was dead ass in my feelings. I was hurt by something, you know, um, some shit went down and I just was not in the mood. So if you didn't see me on Twitter, you didn't see me saying, you know, happy holidays to everybody or, uh, on snap or Facebook or whatever. It's because I really wasn't in the mood and I wasn't trying to, you know, ruin anybody else's, uh, Christmas. Cause y'all know y'all, y'all love to think that Jesus was born on the 25th. That's not his birthday. I mean, even the religious folks will tell you that, but okay, whatever. Um, 
I just don't want to ruin nobody's uh, um, holiday or whatever. It was cute seeing some of y'all, you know, on Snap that I follow or on, um, you know, Instagram. I was looking at some of the videos and the kids opening up their presents and stuff like that. It was cute. It was really cute and all that stuff. I'm going to be quite honest. Some of y'all and y'all, um, some people, I said you waited 364 days to get your kids this. What type of shit is this? What type of parent are you? Okay, you could have kept this and gave it to him on day 112. Okay, I mean, I'm just confused. I was confused, but hey, it's the thought that counts and the money that you can make. All right, that's what you can afford. That's what you do. Moving on from that, you know, I just hope everybody had a, um, a good holiday. Mine wasn't. Mine was probably, this was probably the most shittiest and worst ever. Like, for real. Like, I was real life. I think I was depressed. Because of some shit that went on. Like, I, I real life was just in my feelings. And it's just, it was just ridiculous. I don't care to get into exactly what happened because y'all don't need to know all that. But it was just a lot. <laughs> it was just a lot of bullshit that still ain't fixed at this moment. And um, so my plans for that got messed up. And those plans continued on to what my New Year's plans was going to be. So I got to find some other stuff and also going to continue on to what my birthday plans probably was going to be. And I still got to find some more stuff or what I'm going to do or not do. So I'm just in my feelings about that because, you know, this is a milestone. And I just, you know, I just feel away. I really feel away. Like, it, it's bullshit. It's it's the worst feeling ever. You know, nobody want to be down on their birthday and shit like that. You know, um... So, I thank y'all for the birthday uh, <clears throat> wishes in advance and all that shit. Um, I don't want to put this out there, but I did it last time. Because some people was asking, do I got a P.O. box? No, I don't have a P.O. box. Um, I have a PayPal account. L-I-L-T-A-T-1-6-2-0-0-2 at Yahoo.com. But... I don't care. I don't care. I did that once before and a few people sent some stuff and that was cute. I'm not saying y'all have to. I don't I don't even expect y'all to or whatever, but cuz and I only put that out there because a lot of people been saying, you know, do you have a PO box? I don't have a PO box. I have to look into getting a PO box at this, you know, for the next year, okay? That's one of my um goals that I'm going to do. I'm going to look into and try to get that situated. But um yeah, Y'all, that sounded that, that sounded high, and then it sounded depressing at the same goddamn time. I apologize, but let me take y'all what happened yesterday. So yesterday, you know, I had went to the hospital. I don't know if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, whatever my social media. All that information is in the more info box, okay? And I told y'all a few weeks back, I had to go to the doctor for my acid reflux. You know, um, I was just having some concern because one time. Before I got this doctor appointment, I was coughing up uh, acid. No, I was throwing up acid. Okay, spoiler, you know, warning, you know, all that shit. It's going to be a little gross. And it was just a little line of blood in the, um, the throw up. And it never happened before in the acid too. So I was concerned like, oh shit, is my esophagus and stuff really breaking down and shit like that? So I went to the doctor and they gave me um, an appointment to go see... Uh, have an endoscopy and that's when they put that scope down your throat to see what's going on all that shit in your stomach and everything to see what's going on and so the day finally came yesterday and I was in the hospital mind you my appointment was at 10 o'clock now I know from 10 to whatever they supposed to be prepping you and all this shit so that's what they was doing right it got to 11 30 I was laying in that bed for over an hour or so before the anesthesiologist came down there to tell me that, baby, we were supposed to do this at 11 o'clock, but we got stuck. Well, I got stuck because an emergency C-section came in and, you know, she had to deal with that. And I was like, okay, well, at least that's a uh, legitimate answer. So I'm not going to be as pissed. Baby, I was hungry. Not necessarily was the hunger pissing me out because if y'all ever been to surgery or anything like that, the day before you have to stop eating at 12 o'clock midnight, eating and drinking. I am the type of person that I have to have water by the side of my bed because I wake up and I need to take, because my mouth get dry, you know what I'm saying? And that was hell trying to not reach over and get something to drink or get up and go get something to drink at night, you know what I'm saying? And so that what was killing me. My throat was dry and everything. And, um, you know, how much spit can you suck on? I'm just saying, how much spit can you fucking suck on? But we finally got up in that bitch 
And I didn't even realize that the thing happened. First of all, I come up into the room. They rolled me up into the room. Y'all, I seen that bottle of propofol. I said, no. It really is the milky white substance, the milk that Michael Jack said. No shade. That's what it was, okay? I was like, Jesus. Then my nurse had a whole bunch of other drugs and stuff up in her pocket. Like, she pulled these valves out and was like, I got that good candy right here. I said, please don't do that to me like we on the street and you trying to give me some drugs on the street. Don't do not do that. My nerves is bad as it is already, okay? You know, I shout out to my girl Tamika and everybody else that was like, bitch, you ain't got shit to be worried about. It's going to be quick in and out. And y'all was literally fucking right unless I didn't fell asleep and didn't realize how long they was in there because I felt them, you know, they gave the oxygen, put the oxygen in my nose and gave me the thing to put, keep my mouth open. And I was laying on my side and I felt them put the tube in. I didn't really see them, but I was up. They had me in twilight, right? And then next thing I felt it like two places right here and right here. And then I didn't feel shit else, right? And then I was getting wheeled out. Bitch, I said, wait a minute. It's over and done with that long? Come to find out, they was in there for a second, but it went, it just, it felt like it went quicker than they was in there. Because then I seen the pictures, like, they literally went all the way down to my stomach and all this shit. He said I was fine, y'all. So, thank God for that. My esophagus is fine. I just got bad uh, acid reflux and stay on the medicine that I'm on. Baby, the nurse gonna tell me some. So, we gonna want you to eat this crackers okay eat these gingerbread cookies or whatever shortbread cookies drink you this apple juice okay and um this is in recovery you can't drive you can't do it. nothing strenuous don't do this don't do that because at the moment i was like well y'all talking about someone be hyped up on drugs and shit i don't feel nothing i don't really feel nothing i feel a little dizzy a little dazed but it feel like i'm finna go to sleep but then i just woke up from a sleep that's what it felt like i was like i thought i was gonna be out of it like this bitch he said because listen you had, and this is his words, not mine. They gave you fentanyl, okay? And that's the drug that killed Prince. I looked at him like, and then they gave you propofol, and we both said the drug that killed Michael. I said, no, no, no. So y'all just trying to fuck me up. Bitch, instead of taking me home, my mama went to Walmart. I said, bitch, you could have dropped me off at home. I could have went to sleep and all that stuff, but I still wasn't feeling it. By the time we got out of Walmart, like, the last few minutes of being in Walmart at the checkout line, baby, I just started feeling so loopy, tired, like, I'm about to just pass the fuck out. I said, bitch, get me the fuck home, okay? No, she gonna go stop and get her something to eat. I said, let this buy some shit. Can I get something? No, nah, bitch, you finna go to sleep. All right, you know, so I get home, go to bed, eat a little something first, trying to see if the medicine, um was gonna act right if i was gonna throw it up or not and thank god i didn't have no side effects no negative side effects child i went to bed for a few hours woke up refreshed in the motherfucker and still was feeling a little loopy but i was still good so that was my thing i was just like sometimes you hear little horror stories and i was just scared y'all know i'm paranoid about stuff stuff i just didn't want to have nothing worse going on if you ever had an endoscopy you know y'all let me know how y'all shit went because bitch it, it was a lie it was the first time for me no lie but um now that i got that other stuff out the way my little shit that was going on i'm telling y'all this video is really not gonna be much um tiny and ti let me get this shit out the way tiny and ti tiny filed for a divorce after six years um and we don't know if they really gonna do the divorce or are they just gonna go ahead with the separation for right now because y'all know tiny and ti go through this shit back and forth, back and forth all the goddamn time. But this is, I don't know if this is the first time that we ever heard of um them actually saying that they're going to get an actual divorce, divorce, and somebody filing papers. And I'm not surprised. I'm just, you know, everybody has their limit, and I guess, or their break point, and I guess Tiny finally hit her with all the stuff that was going on. And I noticed that, when Tiny be doing her snaps and stuff, especially inside the house, she's not, she's only there with the kids, okay, and not him. And I was like, so Tiny and T.I. don't live together? And I was hearing reports, whatever, saying that they don't live together, okay, and I guess they don't. And then I seen him at the house on Christmas with little Eris and her little car. That was so cute. When she was backing up and forward and whatever, whoever was controlling that shit, it was funny. But, um... <coughs> 
yeah, that happened. And my thing of it is, I'm not surprised that she filed for divorce. Divorce. I'm not sad about it. You know, I like T.I., but, you know, and his music and some of the things that he do for his community and him speaking out on certain matters and, you know, calling other rappers and stuff out on certain things when it pertains to, like, the Black Lives Matter. He's vocal about a lot of stuff, and I'm cool with that. But, you know, that does not negate the fact that he is a constant cheater, and it doesn't negate the fact that Tiny put up with it, you know? So I really don't feel a way about either one of them. I just feel like, you know... The time has come, okay? Maybe she reached her breaking point. I'm not surprised by any of this. I mean, it's always been rumors that, um, sex rumors about them having, being swingers or some shit like that, or, you know, going to the strip clubs together, which I don't, I don't, I don't care about that. You know, couples do that all the time, and that don't mean shit. But, you know, there was a video coming out, came out with him and some dude, um, girls and Tiny was just sitting there too. And like, this was an everyday thing, you know what I'm saying? So all this stuff that he didn't put her through, you know, cheating, like how many times, how many accusations of cheating had came out against T.I., you know, mind you. Tiny is like the ultimate ride or die bitch. Like, for real. She's the ultimate ride or die woman, in my opinion, because this woman damn near went to jail for her man because she got caught in the car with some, uh, I don't know, was it drugs after he got out? Okay? Some drugs or some guns or some shit like that. When they bust that U-turn, this woman went up into the um, jailhouse and was jerking him off about to get her ass put in jail for doing that, getting caught, getting illegal conjugal visits and shit. You know, she ride or die like a motherfucker and still held him down with all his motherfucking kids from all his other baby mamas. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't know. I have a feeling though, for real though, I'm going to say this. So I want to say that Tiny's going to go through with it. You know, I don't know if Tiny put up with it because she felt she couldn't get no one better than T.I. Um, I don't know if it's a self-esteem issue or whatever, or if she really is just love that was keeping her there. But I honestly feel as though I would not be surprised if they come back a couple of months later and say they work things out. And everything is back to go. Now, if they go ahead and go through with this divorce, what's going to happen to the family hustle? The show. That's what I want to know. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Did y'all see that meme? I have put it on my um, Instagram. Uh, another person fucking died? Bitch, we will get on that in a second. And I say that to the last because this is just, it's just a lot that's going on. And it's really upsetting. Um, it was, I mean, y'all remember when T.I. Family Hustle first came on the first few seasons and then they ended it with them laying in bed and him with his hands crossed and tiny on top of him and all the kids around them. That's how the uh, opening credits were. And then instead of it being T.I. line that, <laughs> it took me a second because somebody was like, when you spot it. <laughs> say something and I was looking like what am I looking at and I totally overlooked the fact that instead of T.I. face it was Floyd Mayweather face like this <laughs> I said trash <laughs> that shit was funny to me though oh sad but it's funny anyway um what's going on what's going on robbed and got rushed to the hospital Child, I don't give a shit, you know, maybe for attention. It is what it is. Trey Songs. Trey Songs was up in Detroit, and he was giving his little performance, and I don't know if he was late or some shit happened, but, you know, see, here's the thing. I, I'm conflicted about this because Trey got up there, and I guess they said, you know, at a certain time, we're going to cut the mic off, and we're going to cut the music off. We're going to cut everything off because it's a curfew, and if you don't know how these venues work, it is a curfew. So if a person goes over time, either they're going to cut the mic off, or you're going to pay for that extra time that you go over, okay? Just like when um, Beyonce was in, I don't know if it was Nashville or whichever one, when the storm came in, and they had to cut the um, concert short, and then she said, "I, I, we're going to continue this concert when the um, storm passes. I'm going to get them what they're worth, and I will eat the bullet. You know, that was like $1,000 or some shit each hour that they went over, whatever, stuff like that. But Trey Song said, bitch, if you cut my motherfucking mic, I will go ape shit on this motherfucking stage. Tr try me. 
Try me. It was two videos that I seen of him warning they asses. And then they fucking cut his mic. And then it was like two or three videos of him tearing up the motherfucking stage. Okay. He was tearing up the thing that little um plexiglass thing where the drama be encased at. You know, I didn't understand. Um, I understood, you know, being upset that they cut your mic and your set and all that shit because they had curfew, but you have to follow the fucking rules unless you want to pay for that overtime and y'all had this situated before time. But, um, tearing up your own shit, <laughs> tearing up your own shit because I'm pretty sure that shit that he was tearing up was part of the band stuff. And I'm like, what was the point? What was the fucking point? And now you arrest because some of the stuff that he threw out into the audience or whatever, one of the pieces hit a cop that was there, a sergeant. And now this motherfucker got a goddamn concussion. I said, nigga, nigga, I get the being pissed off, but, you know, rules are fucking rules. But he did get y'all motherfuckers a warning. But <sighs> it is what it is. So, um... What the fuck is up with Funk Master Flex? He irks the shit out of me. Like, for real, for real. I don't know how he became so popular and so corny at the same time. That Like, you were so so popular and so influential in hip-hop, especially on the radio, Hot 97. We all know him for that. But it's like in the last few years, he became so petty, so bitch-made, so fucking corny. Like, nigga, are you auditioning to be on Love & Hip Hop New York? Because that's what your antics are giving me. You get into it with Drake over the Meek Mill and when Meek Mill and Drake was going back for, you know, you try to come so hard at him like you know something and you really didn't know shit and it like it's gonna change what people's perception of great Drake is because obviously Views done hell of a lot even though the, mute, the CD was trash. Let's be fucking honest. I didn't even buy it. I listened to it and I was this is not what I was expecting after murdering Meek like that. This is not what I was expecting, Drake. But, um, you know, he got into him with that. Then, I, then he just get into it with little people that, was it, young, little, little Yachty and all that shit. That was one of the recent ones that I seen him going back and forth with. And about bars. And, you know, he gets so fucking amped up. And I'm so surprised that he has not had a heart attack or a stroke yet as how... How he probably got high blood pressure. Like, bitch, I just don't understand. Like, how do you make yourself get so pissed off over people that you really don't know and who really don't give a shit about you? Play their records or not, they still selling shit, okay? They still living good, whatever. I don't I don't understand it. Then you get into it with Bow Wow, and I'm like, of all fucking people, Bow Wow. Like, come on, pick, you You pick these people that you perceive are weak and it's just dumb. It's really dumb and it makes you look even stupider for arguing back and forth with them. Now, some videos and some um pictures came out of Drake messing around with J-Lo. We don't know if they're messing around per se, but from one of the latest um pictures that came out um on the 28th, which was yesterday, and I guess that was the day that everybody is saying, you know, y'all remember when J-Lo used to date Diddy and then when Diddy got into that um, shootout at the club or whatever that Shine took the fall for? That was the day that um, J-Lo said, bitch, I don't want no part of this. I have to spend that night going to that gym. Bitch, she said, hell no. It's too thuggery for me, okay? I'm front of Bronx, but this a little bit too much because I'm front of Bronx, but I'm Hollywood now. And my Hollywood side of me is saying, hell the fuck no, run. And that's what the fuck happened. It's understandable, bitch. She ain't trying to fuck up her rep because you up here doing stupid shit. You know? It is what it is. She wasn't right or die right then and there. She wasn't right or die, you know? Um, and they trying to say that they together, it was a picture of her hugged up on, curled up on his legs and stuff like that. They huddle. And I don't know if they're together. I wouldn't be surprised if you come out and say that this was all for a campaign or something that they're doing together, partnershiping with together, whatever. So I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm not going to necessarily say that, you know, they're in a relationship, but Funkmaster Flex gets on a Twitter rant going at Di uh, Drake, you know, oh, so you're going to do this, so this how you get back to Diddy? Because y'all remember Diddy and Drake had a beef at one point, Diddy knocked Drake ass out or whatever. And I'm just sitting here, this is what he said, J-Lo was nice, but my man's hit 17 years ago. These new sensitive niggas think we sweat pussy like them. First of all, we, new, sensitive niggas. 
um, you're a sensitive ass nigga because you're the main one that's always in your feelings hollering at somebody over something stupid that ain't got shit to do with you. And then we, baby, you ain't fuck that bitch. I mean, sorry to call J-Lo a bitch. I ain't talking about her like that. I love me some J-Lo, bitch. But you ain't fuck her. You could never put your dick in that. And J-Lo, if you ever let him try, I'm going to look at you so differently. Like, for real, the Grinch that stole the pussy. Stop fucking playing with me. Uh-uh. No, no. We, bitch? We did that 17 years ago. No, Diddy did that 17 years ago. Not you, okay? J-Lo, that's the get back for a punch to the face. Took me all day to figure this out. Only you would sit there and think so hard and intently about something that happened so long ago that I honestly forgot about until I sent you tweet. I sent this tweet on the fucking shave room about the fucking punch. I'm sitting here like, that was years ago, at least two albums ago. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, come on. So he gonna wait that long? If that's the case, he could have, she could have went. He could have been got at her. Like, he could have been got at her. You know, Drake don't give a fuck if you in a relationship or not. And let me tell you something. J-Lo been on and off with that little Casper boy forever. Like, he could have slid up in there. And you don't know if she he been fucking with her for uh, on, that, on and off time, too. You don't know. You don't even know if they fucking or not. Like, come the fuck on. And then, throwback pussy don't never disrupt getting the bread. That's fact. Canada dry. But you worried about it. And it ain't disrupting his getting his bread either. So I'm confused, fuck Master Flex. Doggy said the pitch for the anniversary and everything. Hi, what a sensitive new nigga fell. The only nigga that's sensitive, like I said, is you. And the only motherfucker that's failing is you. Because Drake will never fucking respond to you. And each time that you open up your mouth and say something about him, his stock still fucking rises, okay? I don't understand what it is that you're trying to do. You're trying to demolish this man's career. But it's obviously not working, okay? It's not working. Here comes the weirdos and the super Stanleys because I got an opinion. An opinion no one fucking asks for, bitch. Like, I just, you Funk Master Flex fans, y'all tell me what the fuck it is. I just don't get it. I don't fucking get it. He's the pussy if you ask me. Nigga, go get you some dick or ass or some shit, whatever the fuck it is that you like. Because you the one that's acting like a pussy that needs to be fucked. I'm just saying. Moving on from that, Stevie J and Jocelyn, they had their baby. Uh, Marsha Ambrosia, she was pregnant and she had her baby. I was like, damn, I didn't know you had the baby yet. But her and her fiance, they look cute together. No lie, I still thought that they was, you know, I thought she was on my team. I'm for real, or at least bisexual. You can't put out that she probably ain't bisexual. And girl, I don't, you probably didn't fuck the puss before. Um, you can't play me. But, uh, congratulations, all right. Uh, congratulations in some order to Stevie J and Jocelyn. They had little Bonnie Bella. And they're not going to show the picture until the delivery special. That's Jocelyn's decision. Fine. But Stevie J just posted a picture of little Bonnie on his chest. And, you know, she's got a head full of hair. A little light-skinned child. I said, all right. Wait till her color get in. She probably is going to be a cutie. Jocelyn's not ugly. Jocelyn's not ugly. And Stevie J does not have ugly kids. So, you know, it is what it is. So, I hope they can co-parent peacefully for the sake of this little girl for real for real um cardi b speaking of love and hip-hop cardi b said that this is her last season on love and hip-hop um cardi b did it right she knew when to get in and when to get the fuck out because she said it's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in 2017 that's gonna hinder her from being on the show that we're gonna see y'all know she's gonna be on b and mary jane y'all know um uh, b and mary jane and well i say bt and um Gabrielle Union settled their little lawsuit and stuff like that, and that'll be coming on next month in January. So, congratulations to um Cardi B, I guess, you know? She ain't trying to be stuck in a fucking rut in the same tight cast ass position. Um, I'm just going through some stuff. Y'all tried to get Tina Lawson. Let me tell you, I told y'all. Let me tell you something. They tried to get Tina... Caught up in the rapture, bitch. Tina accidentally liked a uh, comment on somebody's video that was showing uh, Beyonce and J-Lo singing. And 
you know, if you're going through the comments, you can't accidentally like it because now you get this like function where it's these hearts on the side. So if you're scrolling, you can accidentally like a fucking comment whether you meant to or not, you know. And so I do honestly believe she accidentally liked the comment and it just so happened to be a comment that said that Jello, uh, Jennifer Hudson can't sing and... Of course, that just went rapid across the um, blogosphere, and everybody was talking, and, you know, you know, Tina felt the way, so she had to come back on social media on her Instagram and apologize and say, I accidentally liked the shit. I'm real good friends with Jayla, uh, Jay Hudson. We know her for years, and I would never, ever do nothing like this. My kids told me, bitch, you better be careful on this social media thing, because they're going to twist and turn your shit around and make it seem as this and all this stuff. And just for that, I'm going to take a step back from social media. I said, Tina, stop fucking playing. Because I love Miss Tina on Instagram. Miss Tina is like a grown-ass teenager. Like, I love the fact that she be on there showing so much love to her husband. And her Instagram be more lit than Beyonce and Solange, if you ask me. Because them captions be having me fucking rolling. Every time she get a picture and she reposts it, she be like, go back and look. She be like... Somebody sent me this. Bitch, ain't nobody sent you that. <laughs> Tina don't give a fuck. When she be doing her exercise, like she promote the hell out of her kids. She stand for her kids, and I love that. And she stand for her husband. You know, Tina, don't, don't fuck these bitches. Girl, fuck. But um, anyway, moving on from that. I told y'all it really wasn't nothing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... The main thing that happened, this whole thing, Pink had her baby boy, congratulations, Jameson Moon Hart, second child, with Carrie Hart. Um, I love Pink, though. Remember when Pink came out and we thought she was going to be R&B? She was like this R&B pop, and then Pink was like, bitch, no, that's what the fucking label wanted me to be, because that first album was bombing shit, but everything else afterwards was bombing shit, too. Even when she switched over to the genre that she wanted to be in, I said, that's how you fucking do it. No, you're not finna type hold me up into something that I didn't want to do. Don't pigeonhole me, bitch. But, um, moving on from that... Uh, I don't give a shit about anything else that's on here. Yeah, Eddie Long, y'all pray for Eddie Long, Bishop Eddie Long, because I don't know what's going on. This man is sick, okay? And I'm not going to say, because, you know, people want to say, oh, he got the package, he got this, he got that. And if y'all don't know what the package is, our fucking Kelly, there we go. Our Kelly said he didn't trapped in the closet, okay? He got the package, the package. Oh. <gasps> The package. Y'all know what the package. When Chuck had the package, mm-hmm. it was AIDS, okay? AIDS, HIV. Either one. Um, and y'all know the little scandal that he had messing around with them boys and all that shit. So, of course, automatically when people say say that a gay man is, 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 um, is sick, oh, he got AIDS, he got HIV. No, he could possibly just be fucking sick with the cold, okay? Or his sinus is just fucking messed up. Well, y'all go to the fucking extreme. We still got this negative stereotype against these gay men. And, you know, like, oh, they responsible for this and all that stuff. No, people who don't wear protection is responsible for all the STDs and shit that goes on, whether you're gay or fucking straight. Just saying. But no, something is really wrong with him. Um, He's really, really, really sick, and he's lost a lot more weight than we saw him the last time when we saw that he lost some weight. And <sighs> I just don't know. Maybe it's cancerous. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a lot. Well, I don't wish death on nobody because this is not the time. I just hope he gets better, you know. I don't care what went on, but I just hope he gets better because it's just a lot. It's just not a good look. Um... And speaking of that, R. Kelly is planning on coming out with a new album and of Trapped in the Closet, 35 more chapters. He should have stopped before he got to where he got to in these when they really got stupid. Because Trapped in the Closet was the shit when it first came out, bitch. Everybody was on Trapped in the Closet. I remember when it was a big thing to hurry up and get to the TV because they was going to play a special and they was going to play all the fucking chapters and add a few fucking more. Bitch, it was lit. I don't need no more right now. I don't need no more right now because I just know, because towards the end of the, the the new chapters, it just got really, really ridiculous. I said, okay, what the fuck is you doing? 
okay? But what I really want to talk about, and I didn't want to start this video off with it on a sad note because 2016 has 2016 has been really on some bullshit, some fuck shit. We have lost a lot of people, and and I and it's unfortunate that you know. Because these people are celebrities, of course, they're going to get highlighted. But a lot of people have lost, I'm, I'm talking about us regular folks, have lost a lot of people dear to them. And unusually, like, if we see all these celebrities passing away, imagine all the regular folks who aren't on that level, who are just everyday people just like us watching this video. And me, who have a loved one that passed away, I'm pretty sure it's far more, you know, and it's very, very sad because I've honestly never seen a year where so much death has been in the media, period. Whether it's with terrorist attacks um, from all over the world to people just either getting killed accidentally or getting murdered on purpose or, you know, dying of natural causes or sickness. I have never seen this go on so long and in a year so much like for me when 2016 hit i don't know was it january the second or january the first either way it was between that time natalie cole passed away and then ever since then it just kept going and going and going and going and going and then like the shock of my motherfucking life was when prince passed away i said what prince okay then we get Alan Thicke later on, and we get um, so many celebrities that just passed away before that, after that, between that. And then that's this Christmas break. Friday, Carrie Fisher was on a plane coming from London to L.A. She wound up going into cardiac arrest, and she had a massive heart attack. And good thing that they were 15 minutes away from the airport. And they were able to get down, get her to the hospital, and kind of like stabilize her a little bit. And so I was like, oh, thank God we didn't. Because we literally, the week before, lost Alan Thick, okay? And and whoever, uh, Jean Jean Gabor and all them. We, we, we literally just lost people that actually meant something in Hollywood or whatever. And then all of a sudden, Christmas Day comes. Saturday goes, fine. Christmas Day comes. And then I I wasn't even on Twitter like that. And some said, bitch, look at your Twitter. And I'm looking at these tweets and I'm like, wait a fucking minute. So you mean to tell me George Michael passed the fucking way? Oh, wake me up before you go, go. Don't leave me hanging here like a yo-yo. I said, wham? I said, perfectly manicured and quaffed. George Michael. Freedom, freedom, freedom. And you gotta have faith. T -t 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 Come on and touch your body. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm getting upset. I'm getting sad. Because y'all just don't understand. Like, listen. George Michael was everything. Like, I said, you have got to be kidding. I said, how old is George Michael? George Michael was 53 years old and the PR publicist came out and said he died peacefully in his bed. And it was like, it was um, heart failure. Heart failure. And I'm sitting here like... So was he sick prior to this? He had to have had something going on with him that or had previous heart issues or something for this to happen. That's how I'm going to think about it in my mind. For him to just pass away so suddenly like this and then in his sleep or whatever. It was just like, oh my God, y'all don't know. George Michael, George Michael was that motherfucker. George Michael was perfectly done up. Like, if you didn't know he was gay... Just look at the way that he has so much fucking hairspray in his hair in that Gotta Have Faith video. And he was just moving and moving. And not one hair on his head ever went out of place. George Michael sang with the best Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Beyonce, uh, Madonna, everybody. Like, legends. I remember when he got caught in the bathroom playing footsie by an undercover cop with um and that's when he got out of that he was gay. Like I remember that shit. <laughs> it just reminded me of that senator who got caught doing the same thing. And he was trying to, do, to say that he wasn't gay. Bitch. I got it. I all of that, it just oh. He was fifty three years old. It just came out of nowhere, like 
legend. Legend status, like if you ask me. And if you young people don't know, y'all need to look up Last Christmas, okay? Look up that song. And then directly after that, on Saturday, on, on Monday, the comedian Ricky Harris died. He was in Last Christmas, the movie. He was playing the uncle, okay, with Chris Brown, Loretta Devine, D Delroy, Lindo, um, all the motherfuckers, Lauren London, okay, he played Malvo on Everybody Hates Chris, he was just in the TV movie Royal Christmas, who was fucking around with Vivica A. Fox, like, he was a comedian, like, 54 years old, heart attack, I didn't know he had previous heart issues or whatever, too, that was going on, so, oh, it's just crazy, it's just crazy, and then, and then, Tuesday, Carrie Fisher went on ahead and passed away. You guys know that her mother is Debbie Reynolds, a legend in the game, singing in the rain. Go see the movie. Go go check it out if you haven't checked it out. You know, Elizabeth um, Taylor and her had a big feud because Elizabeth Taylor talk, t took her husband. Mm -hmm. But then they came together like women years later and got over that shit. <sighs> she was in the midst of doing funeral arrangements for her daughter yesterday. And she died. Had a stroke or something. Rushed her to the hospital. And she wound up passing away herself. 84 years old. And if you know the relationship between Carrie and her mother. They were really, really close. And I had no idea. Shout out to John Taylor because he told me. He put it out there. He was like, oh my God. And Billy Lard or whatever. How you say her last name? That's her mother. And she's the one that played on Screen Queen. I said, oh my God, she's like one of the favorites that I like off of, out of the Chanel. Chanel number three with the earmuffs. And then they said that, that um, um, Ryan Murphy or whoever, they put the earmuffs on her as a symbol and, and a homage to her mother for playing Princess Leia. You know how her hair, I was like, oh my God, I feel so bad for that girl. To lose your mother one day and not even 48 hours later to lose another important person in your life she it wasn't even a full 24 hours before her grandmother passed away so it was just it's just that and then some football player just got passed away like what's his name um the guy who invented the solo red cuffs passed away yesterday too um uh, former nfl player keon carpenter dies after suffering an injury on his family vacation. Like, it's just too fucking much. It's too much. And we still got a lot more legends. And, you know, death is a part of life. And especially when a person gets older in age. But when death comes and then people die from heart attacks and other stuff. And, you know, they're like in their 50s or 40s and stuff like that. Or 60s, you know. That's still fairly fucking young for for now, but when we see older people get passed away, it hurts, but, you know, that's part of life because they're up in age. That's understandable, you know what I'm saying? But to see people dying so fucking young from everything and being taken out at any time, it just makes me, like, you know, go and hug your loved ones. Go and check in on your loved ones, you know, your family, your friends, your elders, everybody. Make sure they're going to the doctor. Make sure they're getting themselves checked out. Make sure they're taking their health seriously. Make sure you say what you need to say to them because you just don't fucking know, okay? And that's what 2016 really has just showed us. You don't know. You really don't know what's what happened. Anything happened. And baby, it's still two more days left. I'm going to pray that nothing else happened. And if you have lost a loved one, um... Anytime, this year or whatever, my condolences go out to you. And just keep your head up. I know it's going to be hard. And I understand what it feels like to lose people so close. My uncle died. And then four months later, three or four months later, my aunt died. Tragically. And it's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. But it's all the stuff that I really want to talk about in this video. Um... Not really much. <laughs>
but 2017 will be here. I just want, like, if y'all want to put down in the um, comments what you want to reflect on or what you have planned or, you know, your goals. I don't do resolutions. I'm not one of those people where I'm going to, as soon as January 1st hit, I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. No, start on that shit now. If that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. What's your excuse for not doing it now? I have goals that I want to work towards too. I want to be more sociable. I want to you know, be, put myself out there, get out a little bit more out of my comfort zone because I have done that a little bit more this year, 2016. I've seen that I'm, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable with myself. I'm losing weight. I want to lose more weight. You know, I don't have a set goal. I just want to be healthier. Okay. That's all that I want. I don't want any other problems than what I have already. And thank God, all I have is the acid reflux in this weight problem. That's it. Okay. I don't want to develop the high blood pressure issue, the diabetes issue, the high cholesterol. Thank God I don't have none of that shit, okay? I just want to get this weight down to a comfortable, workable thing for me till I'm healthy as I can be. I want to go out and be more sociable. And I realize that, you know, even as being a confident person or sometimes, like, my weight was kind of holding me back. And that's probably one of the reasons what made me go more so inside of myself because I am a big person. And it's like, who wants to hang around a big person or who wants, you know, it just makes me a little, you know, a little more introverted, okay? So that's why I became, like, a homebody. Like, I'm not too eager to go out and do this and do that because I'm always conscious of, you know, can I fit here? Can I do this? Can I do that? Am I going to slow people up and shit like that? But, you know, this year I've noticed that it's like I'm more eager to do things. You know, I went out more eager to travel, you know, and support and, you know, just live a little. Okay. And I want to, I, I, I push myself a little bit this year. I want to do it a little bit more. I want to go to more events. I want to go to networking events and stuff around my own city. I want to develop relationships that can be valuable to me and, you know, what it is that I do on YouTube or whatever in life that can help me and that can turn into, you know, actual relationships. Like, you know, whether um, business-wise or friendship-wise or whatever, you know, um, things of that such. I just want to be a better me, okay, I don't, I don't want to complain about nothing, I mean, we're human, we're going to complain, you know, I want people to stop complaining about their jobs in 2017, like, quit putting on these tweets and stuff, oh, I can't stand this job and this and that, be thankful that you have a job, I used to do that when I was young and fairly young in the game, and I don't do that no more, because after that time when I got laid off and then I thankfully got my job back a couple of months later, right at the right time when I was running out of money, I would never complain because I'm thankful because I could be asked out, okay? And you could be asked out too, okay? So while you're over here complaining about this job instead of not getting up and doing something about it, like going and get a job that you actually want or working towards that job, you know, there are people out here who don't have anything at all and they can't get anything at all. They're suffering. And you complaining because you got a job that you don't like, but you got a job. Like, and you can do something about that. Like, it's just irritating. But, um, it is what it is on that part. I just want to live a, a fuller, you know, I just want to be happier. Okay, I just want to be 100% happy. Sometimes I don't want to just be content. I want to be happy. I want to do things that make me happy and all that stuff. And, you know, it is what it is. Relationships, friendships, all that shit, you know. Um, 2016 has taught me a lot that I already knew. Like, you know, you can't trust everybody. Don't open up so quickly to everybody because they would try to fuck you over, you know. And I'm glad that I don't do that anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I just seen a lot of stuff firsthand about how to do business and how not to do business and how to get into relationships and how not to get into relationships. And I'm talking about like business relationships, friendships, anything like that, you know, but, um, yeah, that's basically all that I have. You know, y'all can put down in the comments what y'all feel like and anything else that, you know, um, y'all want to discuss before the end of the year, but this is the last, what it is for the 2016 and I hope that everybody has a good um, New Year, Eve, New Year celebration. Please be safe with it, okay? Please be safe with it. 
do not drink and drive. If you need an Uber, my free a uh, free Uber ride, baby. I S E P six. That is the Uber code for me. Okay. I don't want y'all out here drinking and driving, but I do want you guys to be safe. And I want you to bring in the new year in a good way, in a fun way too, okay? So, I will see you guys later before I get a little too deep into my feelings. And I just want to let y'all know that I really, really do appreciate each and every one of y'all. Because y'all don't have to come to my videos. Y'all don't have to share my videos or do anything. I don't tell y'all to do that. Y'all just do it because y'all want to, okay? And at this point in time, it's like we family. So it is what it is. And shout out to the new subscribers. I thank you guys for, you know, just clicking on a video and watching. For however long you watch, I don't care. You watch, you click, you gave it a chance. I appreciate it. I really do. You know, so I hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see y'all tomorrow for Mary to Medicine. And then I'll see y'all whenever. <laughs> Sunday for real housewife. It's Sunday. Yeah, it's gonna be a new episode on Sunday. I'll see y'all later. So y'all enjoy yourselves, okay? Peace.